Hey guys, what's going on? This is David for Flix Talk Podcast. And this episode, we're going to be talking about a movie that we just caught called Overboard. Now, this is a remake of the 1987 film Overboard, where the roles are kind of reversed a little bit, but it's pretty much the same take on it. Now, this film did come out May 4th, 2018, and it barely made back its budget. Now, I'm catching this movie a little bit late. We saw it on VOD because it really didn't kind of interest me as far as going out and, you know, spending my money to see this in theaters. And I was kind of right. But that's not to say that this movie was not fun or serious at all because it was totally that. Now this film does star Anna Ferris, Eugenio Derbez or Derbe, and Eva Longoria as well as one of the funnier characters, Mel Rodriguez, who I don't know if you guys remember him, but we definitely remembered him from the George Lopez show. Now, the quick synopsis for this film is, a spoiled wealthy yacht owner is thrown overboard and becomes the target of revenge from his mistreated employee. So this movie opens up with Anna Ferris kind of juggling maybe two or three jobs. She's a single parent. She has three daughters and her life is just so cluttered. On top of all that, she's studying for an exam and she's trying to become a nurse. So on one of her jobs, she is a carpet cleaner and she gets called onto the yacht of Leonardo who's played by Eugenio. Now Leonardo is just really this pompous arrogant ass. He hasn't worked a day in his life because he's the son of a billionaire. His family owns this company so he's really well set off. All he does is party, drink and just get into some wild stuff. So right off the gate he has this real attitude towards Anna Ferris, pretty much acting like she's a help. She has an argument with him. He actually throws her overboard first and he ends up getting her fired from her job. Now she's kind of shit out of luck. She has nowhere to turn. She has all this debt. Bills are piling up and I believe they're going to foreclose on her house as well. So in a series of drunken events, Leonardo falls overboard, washes ashore, and has amnesia. Now he has no clue about his life prior to that. So Anna Ferris kind of takes advantage of that whole situation and more of like a, a revenge type plot. But essentially she wants to use him as a babysitter to kind of take care of her kids and take care of all the daily chores while she studies for this nurse exam. Now along the way, the daughters and herself develop this whole relationship of this family bond and it actually grows into something that I thought wasn't even going to be there and it was really pleasant to see that especially in the third act it got very emotional especially with these three girls they did an amazing job of acting and i really really felt for them also along the way leonardo gets kind of thrown into this whole working man world where he works with a lot of day laborers and there's this whole funny bit about how his hands are as soft as a woman's because he's never worked a day in his life ¿Qué pedo con tus manitas, güey? No sé. No, no están muy delicadas. ¿A qué te dedicabas, güey? Yo no sé, pero es, son manos de vieja, güey. So, I think this movie is a little more than meets the eye because based off that main poster, it really didn't draw me in too much. But like I said, we caught it on VOD. We wanted to laugh. It was a Friday night. And you know what? Maybe after about 20 minutes, I really got sucked into this whole film and I got invested into these characters, even Anna Ferris, who kind of hit or miss. I mean, she's more of the goofy. I would almost compare her to like a Jim Carrey where she has a rubber face. She's always has like a shocked expression, a real goofy look. I mean, if you guys have seen her in The House Bunny, all the scary movies, you kind of know that face that I'm talking about. But she kind of showed a little more of her emotional side in this film. And I really, really dug that about her. Now you have Eva Longoria, who's kind of a side character. She's more of a best friend to Anna Ferris's character, Kate. And she's kind of the one that initiates the whole kind of using Leonardo to her advantage. Now, someone I wish I would have saw more of was Swissy Kurtz. Now, she played Grace, who was Kate's mom. Now, we didn't really get to see too much of her. She was a grandma. And, uh, you know, she was kind of working on more of herself and her trying to kind of live her theatrical days. So we didn't get to see too much of her but I kind of wish we would have saw more of her so that's kind of only my dislike about this film like I said it's more quirky than hysterically funny but the drama really hits when these three girls kind of get invested and attached to Leonardo's character and they really do look to him as a father and them calling him dad and you know he teaches them how to ride a bike and he teaches them the pressures of boys and all kinds of things a good father would do and I really like seeing that soft side now I'm gonna be honest I haven't seen too much of Eugenio Derbez who plays Leonardo in this film. Now I know he's from Mexico and he's making that American crossover so he was in How to Be a Latin Lover as well as Instructions Not Included which I heard was a big one. So I actually seen this film I want to go back and check out his last couple of films because I believe he is a good actor and it's awesome to see that he's making a crossover in American cinema. 
Now, that being said, guys, back to Anna Ferris, who I absolutely love. Uh, I think she could have amped it up a little bit more with the jokes and show a little bit more emotion because towards the end in that third act, she kind of does fall in love with Leonardo. But I kind of wish I would have saw a little more bond and a little more dynamic, especially since the daughters kind of showed a little more emotion than she did towards this man who kind of treated her like a queen at the end of the film. That being said, there's a lot of life lessons in this movie. Don't just go into it thinking it's a goofy comedy because it's definitely not. And because of that, I'm going to give Overboard a solid 7 out of 10. It's good for a single watch, and I might watch it again with some friends that haven't seen it. But yeah, it's pretty much one and done. So yeah, I definitely recommend checking this one out. We saw it on VOD. It is streaming currently, and it does hit DVD and Blu-ray on July 31st, 2018. All right, guys, if you guys like what you heard here, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribing anywhere you're listening or watching from. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you guys hit that bell notifications so you guys can always stay alerted with all the content that I have dropping daily if not every other day. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching till the end. This is David for Flix Talk signing out saying thank you for watching and listening.